How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astrophotography. In today's episode of The Night Sky, we are talking about The Night Sky in November. Almost the whole year is gone and I almost got 12 videos out. This video is all about cultivated, cultivated? This is a curated list of deep sky objects, planets, events, nebulae, things like that. Astronomical goodies going on through the night sky in the Northern Hemisphere during November. Now I'm just going to front load this right now. If you can't see Orion, the first few target suggestions are not going to be useful for you because November is all about Orion. I suppose, I suppose December as well, but we'll get to that. Anyway, we're going to start off with deep sky objects and we're going to move on to plants and events and meteor showers as well. There's quite a few meteor showers around, but all these are based off of a full frame camera lens, the 5D and equivalent focal lengths will be thusly. Let's begin at 100 to 200 millimeters. This is going to be the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula. Now this very large frame, you could get both of these relatively large targets in one area. And if you're under dark skies, you'll get all the dust in this region as well. And if you use a hydrogen alpha filter, it'll really show you how much dust is in this region. So 100 to 200 millimeters is my target suggestion for you guys. Those are camera trackers lenses and very extremely wide telescopes. At 300 to 400 millimeters, this is a very dim target. Could be very difficult under city light pollution, but it's a reflection nebula. Once again, in the constellation of Orion, I believe, it's the Witch Head Nebula. Now, this is another one of those that I've always seen, but never been able to shoot because I can't see Orion. There you go, my own November list is useless to me. Good job. So the Witch Head Nebula is just quite close to the Orion Nebula. It's a very, it's a reflection nebula that's energized by the near, the nearby star. So because it's a reflection nebula, broad, narrowband filters are not gonna be useful for you. It's all about the broadband. So give it a go if you have nice dark skies and a good access to it, or Star Tracker in a wide field telescope. At seven to 800 millimeters, there's only one target I'm going to be recommending for you. You know it's coming, that's M42, the Orion Nebula. Now, a lot of people cut their teeth on this nebula, including myself. It's one of the easiest to find, easiest to photograph, but very difficult to master because it has an extremely bright core of stars. What people do with this is normally blend different exposure times, short 10 second, 15 second exposures for the stars and blend it into two, three minute long exposures for the nebula and the dust lanes and the wings of the nebula, etc. like that. It is emission and reflection, so it will respond to hydrogen alpha imaging. So 700 to 800 millimeters, you go get yourself some Orion Nebula. Do it for me because I can't see it. At 1,000 millimeters, I'm talking about M78, Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. Now you may have heard of the cartoon, if you're young enough. Now Casper the Friendly Ghost is in the constellation of Orion. It's very close to the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula, just a little bit up. Quite small, a little bit dim, but has some very intricate detailing to it. And again, that's 1,000 millimeters. So if you've got that telescope, consider having that one a look. I've not really seen many photos of M78. Give it a go. Do it for Cap. Now one and a half thousand millimeters of focal length, the larger telescopes are actually fine again out of Orion now, so you can start paying attention to the video again. This is NGC 7129, the small cluster nebula, and this is in the constellation of Cepheus. Of course, I'm not gonna go through one of these without repping Cepheus. So it's a small cluster nebula, clues in the name, I guess, but yeah. If you've got one and a half thousand millimeters, I believe this is probably another one of those targets that often gets overlooked. So have a consider of that if you've got that kind of instrument. I can English today, I'm really struggling to talk. At 2000 millimeters, we're going to Ursa Major now for NGC 2841. This is the Tiger's Eye Galaxy. This is a very gorgeous small galaxy that I managed to find during my research. It looks absolutely stunning. And galaxies in winter, Who'd have thought? So this is what I'd be recommending for you people with the very large telescopes. And I'd love to see your photos of this galaxy. Now, when it comes to planets, we have a nice quartet in the night skies during November. Is quartet a word? There's four of them. We have Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn, and Neptune. Hey, Neptune, a wonderfully small blue one. So again, as always, the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, they're really good for beginners because you do still need large telescopes for them, but they're very bright, very big, and they've got a lot of surface detail, especially Jupiter. 
that would be very rewarding for beginners and more straightforward to focus on. When you get to things like Neptune and Uranus, however, they're just small blue balls in the night sky, even with very large telescopes. So have a go at these targets. Like I said, they all go above about 20 degrees of altitude from my latitude in the United Kingdom. I'm around the Midlands area. So if you're much higher up, they're gonna be lower. If you're lower down, they're gonna be higher. Check Stellarium, that's what I do. Where do you think I got this list from? Now as for me to show us throughout November, sit down, buckle up, strap in, cause there's quite a few. From the 14th of November to the 6th of December, peaking on the 28th of November, we have the Northern Orionids meteor shower. So that's gonna be an interesting one. Again, if you can't see Orion, probably a useful list for you, but there's one of them. Next up, peaking on the 5th of November, so I suppose that actually should have been first, is the South Taurids. And then swiftly followed by the North Taurids, peak on the 12th of November. And as for another well-known one from the 6th to the 30th of November, peaking on the 18th of November, we have the Leonids meteor shower. So quite a few to do. These are really good for static tripods. So if you've only got a tripod and a shutter cable, go out there and do meteor hunting. You set a long shutter and you, I guess, hope. <laughs> and there should be nice streaks through the night sky. So there's your four meteor showers for November the greedy month. As for a couple of events, it feels a bit strange giving them their own little subject here because there's only a couple of them. However, one of them's a bit of a doozy. On the 19th of November, which is the full moon, it's a partial lunar eclipse. So we're gonna get the nice red moon in the sky. Depending where you are, will change how much of the lunar eclipse you see. Knowing me in England, it's either gonna be a very poor show or it's gonna be cloudy, probably cloudy. This year has been terrible. Also, Uranus is at opposition. I forgot to write down the direct date, so editing Rus is going to add the date right here. Aren't you editing Rus? Yes, you are. Anyway, speaking about the lunar eclipse, we're gonna go on to the lunar phases now. The new moon falls on the 4th of November. The first quarter falls on the 11th of November. As previously mentioned, the full moon is on the 19th of November, and that's the beaver moon. And the last quarter is the 27th of November. In November, the beavers were really busy and really active preparing themselves for the winter to get through the winter. It's for this name that the beaver moon became the beaver moon. However, sometimes it was also referred to as the frost moon, probably for obvious reasons, being winter time, in case beavers aren't your thing. And with that, that is the Night Sky November all completely wrapped up. I hope you'd enjoyed the video. I enjoyed researching it. The, the winter is a lot easier for these videos because there's so much going on. Anyway, if I've missed something that you think is worth mentioning, drop it in the comment down below. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more like this, consider subscribing. And finally, thanks very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later. Be from the moon.